martingale and interaction. We know uh, how to deal with a set of random variables and in most cases we assume almost all cases till now we assume that they are independently distributed or in most cases independently are identically distributed. The most important thing is the independence, the independence of random variables. So, while studying this all these theorems, results, lemmas, whatever with respect to this set of independent random variables or a sequence of independent random variables. Now, the question might arise that is it possible to discuss or study just relaxing this assumption. So, that means, can we think of a set of random variables which are not dependent? Now, the question is whenever we say that two variables are not independent that means, they are dependent then the natural question would be the most important question would be what is the dependent structure. Now, there are various dependent structures many many structures are possible. So, today we are going to discuss one such structure that involves expectation of sequence of random variables, but having a particular dependent structure. Now, obviously, this dependent structure is not very general, but a particular form although this happens very frequently in real life. So, this important concept uh, we call it as martingale. So, today I will give you a very brief introduction on this martingale and discuss a few exam few examples and uh, very uh, elementary properties of this martingale. So, the main so the main object so the main objectives uh, of today's talk uh, I, will, I will first introduce the con how it comes few very basic results and I will also at the end discuss uh, two very interesting examples. So, the question is uh, how this martingale comes into the picture or into the area of probability theory. So, martingale theory like probability theory has its origin in gambling theory. So, we all know that probability theory actually evolves. So, the main object so 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 the main objectives of today's talk I will first introduce the concept of martingale what is the meaning of this how it comes few very basic results and I will also at the end discuss uh, two very interesting examples. So, the question is uh, how this martingale comes into the picture or into the area of probability theory. So, martingale theory like probability theory has its origin in gambling theory. So, we all know that probability theory actually evolves uh, from a particular problem in gambling theory uh, the same way martingale also has its origin in the gambling theory. Uh, the name Martingale is first used by Ville in 1939, but uh, it is it was observed that uh, it was known that Bernstein, Levy, they have already used this idea of Martingale, but they did not uh, give any name to this particular uh, phenomenon. So let us first uh, introduce this Martingale uh, from a particular gambling, uh, maybe from a gamble or a problem from the gambling theory. Um, so, let us consider that x n be the fortune of a gambler after n trials in succession. That means, after n trials, so, so a gamble means you are considering a gamble with one trial one after another. So, after n -th, n -th trial or after n trials the fortune of a gambler or the profit or the gain of the gambler is denoted by x n which is naturally a random variable. Now, if a gambler survived the first n trials, so gambler's expected fortune after n plus 1 game should be expectation of x n plus 1 given f n. Now, script f n is the sigma field generated by the first or fortune in the first n trials that is x 1 x 2 x n. Now, 
x n plus 1 is the fortune of the gambler after n plus 1 trust. So, the expected value is nothing but is expected profit or expected fortune. Now, we say that the gain is fair if expected gain on trial n plus 1 is equals to 0, because uh, expectation of x n plus 1 minus x n. So, x n plus 1 is the fortune after n plus 1 at trial conditioning on this on f n uh, if we have x n minus x n because we know that his fortune is x n. Now, after n plus 1 at trial if the expected fortune is x n itself then only the, uh, the expected gain would be 0. So, we can write immediately that expectation of x n plus 1 given f n equals to x n. So, under this condition we say that the game is fair. So, now when we say that the game is favorable to the gambler if expected fortune is greater than x n that means, game is favorable if expectation of x n plus 1 given f n is greater than equals to x n and it is unfavorable to the gambler naturally if expectation of x n plus 1 given script f n is less than equals to x n. So, one interesting observation that immediately appears from this, this points is that expectation of x n plus 1 given the sigma p generated before that if this is equals to oh, equals to the variable that is that is observed at the at the previous trial that is x n that means x n the uh, value or expected value of x n plus 1 only depends on the previous random variable or the previous observation and not the other observations before that or not other past observations. Another thing is that if we can interpret this equality term here, we can also interpret if the equality changes to inequality. That means, in this case the game is favorable if it is greater than equals to and if it is unfavorable if the expectation of x n plus 1 given f n is less than equals to x n. So, two important things are there. One is not only we will discuss the equality situation, we should also concentrate or we should also keep our mind open while in, in incorporating or uh, in discussing uh, what happens when this inequality not holds. That means, what happens if there is some kind of inequality and n plus 1 th or observation or expected value on, on n plus 1 th random variable should depend on the observed value of the at the nth trial. Another important thing is that this entire so so there is a dependent setup, dependent structure. So x plus happening in if n plus one trial depends something related to the previous trial or the nth random variable. And another important observation, or rather the most important observation, is that this dependent structure is true expectation, or rather conditional expectation. So, this simple gambling problem gives us a nice idea uh, about, a, uh, about, a, about a dependent structure involving random variables at one stage and random variable at the previous stage, but not other past stages and this dependence is through the conditional expectation. So, this is very important. So, these are the observations that means, x n plus 1 depends somehow on x n that means, we are, this is the first time we are deviating from the standard independence concept or standard IID random variables concept and the form of this dependence is through expectation rather conditional expectation. Now, let us formally define this situation and while defining a random variable or conditional expectation we should start with a probability space which in this case is omega script f and p where script f is the sigma field generated by the class of subsets of omega and p is the probability measure defined on the measurable space omega and script f. And let us consider x n as a sequence of random variables on this probability space omega script f and p and this is very important and consider script f 1 is a subset of script f 2 is a subset of script f 3 and so on. That means, we consider script f i 
i greater than equals to 1 as an increasing sequence of sub sigma fields of script f. Now, remember all these sigma fields are coming sub sigma fields are coming from script f. Now, if this three conditions hold like if x n is f n measurable that means, x n is measurable with respect to the sigma field generated up to that point. So, x n is f n measurable expectation of mod x n less than infinity and expectation of x n given f n minus 1 is x n minus 1 almost surely. Then we call x n script f n is, is a, a martingale sequence. So, whenever we define a martingale sequence it is important to mention the sigma field underlying sigma field otherwise this entire thing has no meaning at all. So, that means the sigma field or the sequence of sub sigma field associated with the sequence of random variables uh, will be called martingale sequence if these conditions hold. So, in short we will say that expectation of x n given script f n minus 1 equals to x n minus 1 almost surely then we call this as a martingale. If this x conditional expectation of x n given f n minus 1 is greater than equals to x n minus 1 almost surely we call it a sub martingale and if it is less than equals to x n minus 1 almost surely we call it super martingale. So, we, we give names to all the situations whether there is equality or inequality. In fact, both types of inequality uh, have, have different meanings sub martingale and super martingale. Let us consider a few results. Uh, first result is that let x n f n be a sub martingale. So, let us it is important to note we start the result with a sub martingale sequence not a martingale sequence. So, if x n f n be a sub martingale g is a convex increasing function then if g x n is integrable for all n greater than equals to 1 then g x n f n this pair is a sub martingale under the condition that g is a convex increasing function and x n f n is a sub martingale. In particular x n plus is a sub martingale if x n is sub martingale. So, this generalizes this this actually generalizes or uh, provides us a very important class of sub martingales from one sub martingale or rather we can construct several sub martingales from a class of from a given sub martingale just by considering several convex increasing functions. Now, we are the, we are going to state one theorem uh, that is related to martingale. So, let x n f n be a martingale g is a simple convex function not necessarily increasing just a convex function. If g x n is integrable for all n greater than equals to 1 then g x n f n is a sub martingale this is very important. We have started with this martingale, but when we consider the convex combination convex function g x n f n is a sub martingale. In particular for r greater than equals to 1 x n is a martingale and uh, uh, a modulus of x n to the power r uh, is integrable then modulus of x n to the power r is sub martingale. Uh, we are not going to prove this results because uh, this is very trivial and very elementary proof just follows from Jensen's inequality. We have already described Jensen's inequality for conditional uh, expectation. So, just application of uh, Jensen's inequality uh, along with the definition of sub martingale and martingale uh, gives us this the proofs of these two results. Now, uh, just to give a feeling uh, uh, I will discuss uh, two examples. The first example is a famous one uh, we, we are encountered with uh, this kind of a problem in probability theory which is known as polyer urn scheme. It says that suppose an ordinary suppose an urn contains r red balls and b black balls. Consider the proportion of black balls at the very beginning that means, put T naught equals to B by B plus R. Now, at each drawing the scheme goes like this at each drawing a ball is drawn at random its color is noted and a ball of same color is added to the urn. That means, at the first draw if we draw a black ball then we add another black ball of the same color. We can generalize this by adding 
a number of balls of same color to the sun. That means, if the first drawn color is black, then we, we add a number of black balls in the urn. So, that in the during the next draw, the number of black balls will be b plus a and the total number of balls will be b plus r. But if we have drawn a red ball, we have we should have added a red balls, a number of red balls to the urn. So, that the number of red balls would be r plus a and the total number of balls should be b plus r plus a. Now, let us denote by b n and r n as the number of black balls and red balls respectively after nth drawing. Then show that T n is Martin group. How to prove this? The proof is extremely simple. All we have to show that expectation of T n given T n minus 1 is T n minus 1. Now, we know that probability of drawing a black ball at the n plus 1 is draw depends only on balls in the R after n drawings. Therefore, we immediately have expectation of T n given T n minus 1, T n minus 2 up to T 1 is nothing but expectation of T n given T n minus 1, because all the information contained in T 1, T 2 up to T n minus 2 are incorporated within T n minus 1, conditioning on T minus T n minus 1. So, expectation of T n given T n minus 1 up to T 1 is nothing but expectation of T n given T n minus 1 almost surely. Now, let us calculate this expectation. So, expectation of T n given T n minus 1 equals to B n minus 1 by B n minus 1 plus R n minus 1, because after n, a n minus 1 is draw number of black balls is B n minus 1 and number of red balls in the R n is R n minus 1. Now, given that this is the situation, then expected number of expected proportion of black balls in the R n after n is draw should be equals to B n minus 1 plus a by B n minus 1 plus a plus R n minus 1 into B n minus 1 by B n minus 1 plus R n minus 1 plus uh, here B n minus 1 by B n minus 1 plus R n minus 1 plus a into R n minus 1 by B n minus 1 plus R n minus 1. This is just uh, using the simple elementary uh, properties of probabilities and expectations. And if we just simplify this quantity, this entire quantity is then we will immediately see that we get b n minus 1 by b n minus 1 plus r n minus 1, which is nothing but t n minus 1. So, we see that expectation of t n given t n minus 1 uh, equals to nothing but t n minus 1. So, we can say that t n is a Martin Gold sequence. So, the standard polyers are scheme that we know from the probability theory or some uh, while working out some classical problems in probability theory. Uh, we see that uh, this is this can also be observed or uh, interpreted as a sequence of as a Martin Gould sequence. Uh, let us consider uh, another uh, example uh, which is directly related to a or using a particular random variable. So, we all know we are familiar with the normal distribution. So, let us consider y n to be a sequence of i i d independently and identically distributed normal 0 1 variables. Now, S n, if we define S n equals to summation k equals to 1 to n y k, then naturally S n sequence S n is not independently distributed or say or the S n for different values of n are not independent really. And we define X n alpha equals to e to the power or exponential alpha S n minus n alpha square by 2. Uh, it is immediately clear that this X n to the power alpha or in X n upper alpha this sequence is not independent for different values of n. Then we have to show that sequence of x n alpha is a Martin group. The proof is very simple, simple algebra uh, will give us the proof. Uh, let us uh, mention that or describe expectation x n alpha given x n minus 1 alpha equals to expectation of you now what is x n alpha this is nothing but exponential alpha s n minus n alpha square by 2 conditioning on x n minus 1 alpha. Now, we can easily split this s n as s n minus 1 plus y n, because s n is nothing but y 1 plus y 2 plus y n minus 1 plus y n and the first part is y 1 plus y 2 plus y n minus 1 is s n minus 1. So, we can immediately write it as alpha s n minus 1 plus alpha y n given 
Now, just I am writing for the sake of simplicity that x, x, x n minus 1 alpha is nothing but exponential alpha s n minus 1 minus n minus 1 alpha squared by 2. And just a little bit of manipulation will give us uh, expectation of alpha s n minus 1 because conditioning on s n minus 1, this s n minus 1 is constant. So, we can keep this outside the expectation into expectation of e to the power alpha y n given something that is related to up to variables up to n minus 1. Now, since y n are i i d, so naturally y n and y 1, y 2, y n minus 1 and hence y n and s n minus 1 are independent. So, expect so this condition we have learnt a sequence of random variables which are not depend which are not independent that means, there is a dependent structure which we call martingale. So, this particular dependent structure is called martingale we have already studied. We have already studied a few examples uh, and uh, one or two results uh, that are related to this martingale sequence of random variables. Now, it is it is important to note at this point that although we have devoted only a few minutes to this martingale theory, it is basically an introduction. I am trying to just give you a feeling of what this martingale is and how one can use and wha how some very common problems can be looked upon as a consequence of martingale theory. Naturally, uh, one can do a lots of research and lots of research have already been done in this area and still uh, research is still moving on um, in this area of martingale uh, sequence of random variables. And naturally, one can extend uh, this idea that means, one can think of some other dependent structure uh, that, that is possible in case of some dependent, dependent random variables or a sequence of random variables which are dependent, but today we only confine our attention only to martingale sequence.